hours and everything. Yeah. Like Praise the Lord, we're all checked out, everybody. And um, <clears throat> we are in uh, Daytona Beach on the 95 heading south. So we're heading south and we're going to Fort Lauderdale today. We're gonna check in, get our stuff together, press our clothes and wash the car and get ready for some Holy Ghost Church. And we're looking forward to souls being one to Jesus and to people being delivered and saved and set free and blessed and oh, it's gonna be good. And uh, praise God for everybody who sent us. Uh, we made it. We made it. We made it. We made it. It's a little bit <laughs> partly cloudy today. It's 85 degrees uh, in Daytona. Yeah. And we're headed south. But I, I want to talk to you about harvest. Uh, I want to talk to you about your harvest. That if you've got seed in the ground, if you're a tither and a giver, if, if you're a sower, seed sower, you got a harvest on your way. You got a harvest coming. Look how pretty that is. Isn't that pretty? They say there's alligators in there, but I only think there's alligators in there when they when there's fish in there or food. Rats or possum or whatever they eat. And uh, I've had two different people once when I pastored in Tampa and another time down here in Miami tell me that the alligators are all connected lake to lake underground. I don't know how they swim from lake to lake, but they have underground channels. And they can swim underground tunnels from lake Miami, to lake. Miami, 260 miles, everyone. Yeah, we're about, we're about three and a half hours, four hours to Fort Did Lauderdale. See, yeah, how many miles to Miami? 260. 260, so. We're practically there. Yeah. <laughs> Fort Lauderdale's before then. But I want to talk to you about your harvest because I'm believing for... The Lord keeps putting it on my heart. The word shaking. There'll be a, lay, a big shaking. There's my kiddos, my children. All peaceable in the back. You see Timmy's foot. Say hi, Andrew. Hi. We're going to the beach. You're going to go to the beach? Yeah. Our sand bucket. Oh, you got you a sand Timmy? bucket. Yeah. yeah. You see Timmy? Let's see, where's Timmy? There's Timothy. Yeah. Hi, Timmy. Huh? And Timothy? Timothy. 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 <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's talk about your harvest. I want to talk about the uncommon seed produces the uncommon harvest in your life. <laughs> now, somebody sowed a thousand dollar seed last night into this ministry as a matching challenge gift challenging everybody else uh, to sow they're going to match it dollar for dollar up to a thousand dollars and uh, we've got we've got till tomorrow to get this done uh, end up midnight tomorrow so I'm asking everybody who watches this to go right now to monthlypartners.com and sow the biggest seed up to a thousand dollars. If you can sow a thousand, it's going to be matched dollar for dollar. If you can sow twenty or a fifty, fifty-two dollar seed, a fifty-two dollar seed will put us exactly at our meeting our budget this month. We're fifty-two dollars away from meeting our budget this month, but we're starting a new month and what you're giving towards this matching challenge fund is towards hotel and it's extremely expensive for a safe hotel i mean i could check us into a dive but i don't believe that's god's will for my family or for me when we're well, ministering down here also the the nice hotels can be a dive yes because it's a really big city and there's a lot of people we were at a really nice hotel last night we checked in it was you know it was a really nice chain hotel that you know if you stayed there in Oregon people would say wow it's a nice place you know but there was some man and poor guy he was um, bound he was on on something and he was what they, they call it tripping I don't know I'm trying to get the right lingo here tripping he was tripping <laughs> he was a crackhead he wasn't, he wasn't tripping over rocks he was Apparently, he was manifesting from the drugs. 
And they call it tripping, I guess, <laughs> says the people at the front desk. He was tripping, all right. He was karate <laughs> chopping the air. He was, he was a little different. And everyone was kind of, you know, a little bit nervous. Staying away from a little bit. And then, and then later on in the night, we had to come down and get some towels. And the no, no, no. I called Joanne. I got on the phone. Joanne's up late at night. I said, Joanne, come on, pray. Plead the blood. Let's come on. <laughs> we're going to pray. We're going to pray this guy out. And what happened? Well, you know, I said, okay, well, we're going to stay low from him a little bit. We're going to, you know, bathe the kids, put the kids to bed. And I had some laundry to do and I had to get some towels at the front desk and everything. So uh, there's more events I didn't tell you about, so you'll hear about it in a minute. <laughs> so um, anyway, so we, we went, put the kids to bed, got, got them in the tub, put them to bed. And me and Hannah, my 18-year-old, she's all grown up and helps out. And she goes down with me to do laundry and... And uh, we needed to get a towels from the front desk, so we stopped at the front desk, and the the guy wasn't there. So we just kind of stood around, and Hannah calls the hotel, thinking the phone ringing will help. And in comes another man, and he he's checking in too, I guess. And he stood behind us a little bit, and he said, "Wow," he's just real laid back, you know. He says, "Wow," he says. All this nice stuff, the guy's out this long, we could have hauled all this stuff out of here. That's a nice mirror, that's a nice TV. And I'm thinking, oh boy, you know, I'm going to sit here and I'm going to witness a thievery. <laughs> and I thought, uh-oh, you know, I hope this guy gets down here and quick, you know. So, uh, you know, we just prayed under our breath and in our heads that, you know, this man would hurry. Well, he did. He came to the front desk. You didn't tell me none of this. No. <laughs> and as Hannah and I were walking back, Hannah says, you know, Hannah's studying in school, in college for, uh, her, master's. Uh, her, her, she's getting her degree in, in uh, criminal forensic psychology, and she's having to study a lot of law, just like, you know, lawyers and people do. And, Why? And, because and, we need Christian psychologists. And, and, we need Christian lawyers, Christian doctors, Christian everything. And she's studying medical stuff. So she's, you know, doing the same classes as, as um, some medical professionals and stuff like that. And she says, you know, Mom, I think that other guy was on crack and Percocet, possibly. This guy is probably on weed. He could be tired, but I think he might be on weed. And I said, oh, Hannah, this is so scary in the world we live in because you don't know, you know. And I just encourage you today, you know, you might be out and about in the world and you don't know what person's doing what thing. <laughs> And you just have to pray and trust that you're going to be in God's safety wherever you go. Because his word says he keeps us in safety wherever we go. Psalms 91, so yes. There's a there's a lot of grandmas. I was thinking of some grandmas I know. And they'd be so scared about now. And they'd be shaking and they'd be running to their room and locking the door and everything. It was a nice place <laughs> at Daytona Beach. It was. But, you know, you got to think. You're in a big world and there's a lot of sin. Sin abounds, the Bible says. It abounds everywhere. And so we have to remember that. And people, they're lawless. They are on different things that make them think funny. They do funny things. They act funny. The and we demonized. just have to, yes, and we have to remember that we are kept in safety wherever we go. Now, that means we use wisdom, of course. We're not going to run around and act crazy. And plead the blood. But we have to pray and we have to use wisdom and we have to stay away from those people. But we're not going to be so scared where we don't go because of it. Oh, so, yeah, if you get to thinking about that, you won't leave your house. Yeah, you won't leave You'll be your shivering door. under your bed and lock all the doors. You live out in the country and bolt lock it three times. <laughs> so I just encourage you today to, to be safe, but to use God's wisdom and pray wherever you go. Because sometimes, one time I was talking to an elderly lady and she said, you know, there's just as much crime in the country as there is in the city. So, you know, it's everywhere. And like I said, sin abounds, the Bible says. So we have to just be careful, wise as serpent and honest as doves, and just go and pray and believe, but use wisdom. And so that's that's an interesting story about that man. But anyway, all, we were all safe and everything was fine. And we got to bed and we have a nice day. We're headed to Miami. And Miami is about just 30 minutes. Just anoint her so she can take over, Lord. 30 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. It'll be all right with me. Bye. 30 minutes from where? <laughs> we're 30 minutes. Okay, Miami's 30 minutes beyond Fort Lauderdale. So we're about 230 miles from Yeah, Fort let's not follow this truck. Let's get around them. So, yeah. Okay, here's Deland and New Smyrna Beach. New Smyrna Beach has 
the most sharks of any beach in Florida. Oh, wow. So we don't want to stop there. No, we don't want to stop there. Nope. It'll come up in real shallow water. You know, my hair looks real nice in the mirror at the hotel. And then all of a sudden, I step outside, boom, it curly. just, what in the world? It's curly and the natural hair comes out at the beach. What? You got wiggy hair. I need to get it shaved, I guess. Uh-huh. Okay, let's talk about harvest, y'all. <laughs> An uncommon seed always creates an uncommon harvest. Always, always, always. Let me give you some scriptures to, prem to premise, substantiate the claim of seed time and harvest. Genesis 8, 22, as the, while the earth remaineth seed time and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night shall not cease. So just as, just as much as the sun will come up and go down, just as much as it gets cold in the winter and hot in the summer. This is a law. This is a law. Uh, cold and heat is a law. There's no global warming. Okay? Get that out of your head. That's man-made. Man has made that to rob you, to tax you, to find another way to tax you. It's a bunch of sack of lies is what it is. And if you're if you're believing that, you're going against Genesis 8:22. As long as the earth remaineth, there's seed time and harvest. Well, the next one is cold and heat. Okay. In other words, there's seasons. So if you put a seed in the ground, you're going to have a harvest that comes up. Luke 6:38. Give. It's not a request. It's a command. Give and it shall be given. How? Good measure. Press down. Shaken together and running over, who shall men give unto your bosom? So an angel ain't going to drop it out of heaven and hit you on the head with it. I mean, he could and he has. In some instances, I've seen it happen. Money show up in people's handbags and purses and bank accounts. But he always uses men. And I'm expecting an uncommon harvest to come to you in the name of Jesus because you're a seed sower, you're a tither, and you're a giver. 2 Corinthians 9, 6, But I say unto you, He which soweth sparingly shall reap sparingly. So he said, Well, I ain't got nobody giving to me because you're, you're not sowing. You're not a sower. You, you, you're, not, you're not doing what the Word of God says. He which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. So if you want a bountiful harvest, you have to sow bountifully. I tell you, somebody who sows a thousand dollars is going to reap a bountiful, bountiful harvest. There are some people that are going to sow ten thousand dollars. When I get down here, you watch and see. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have a miracle report. I'm gonna say, look what the Lord has done. Look how many more souls I can reach. Look how much equipment I can get. Look what I can do for God. And we're gonna, our boast is in the Lord. We're gonna brag on how good Jesus is. Why? Because Angie and I got our seed in the ground. We got our seed in the ground. We are sowers, we're tithers, we're givers, and we're standing on the word of God ourselves. And so if you're sowingly, sparingly, then you're going to reap sparingly. That's the Bible promise. God is not mocked. He is not a man that he should lie. Galatians 6, 7, 8, and 9. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever man soweth, that shall he also reap. For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption, but he that soweth to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. You know, it's true. I can get a new shirt, beautiful new shirt, or tie, or suit, or shoes, or get the children something, or get my wife something, and it never fails. Everything in life breaks down, Right? A thread comes out or <laughs> it's like, wait a minute, this was nice. Well, you sowed to the flesh, you reap corruption. Doesn't mean it's evil, you gotta have clothes, but the things of this flesh are temporary. The things of this world are temporary. It's going to corrupt. The car corrupts. Thank you, Jesus. I got 82,000 miles on this car and I'm doing just fine. Thank you, Lord. The car is going good. 2019 and yet 82,000 miles. We'll hit 100,000 miles on this trip, I'm sure. 
but all for the glory of God. So he says, oh, you're going to wear your car out. Yes, yes, I got used to that a long time ago. That when we get a brand new car, we have fully intend to use it and wear it out for the Lord Jesus. Every mile on the odometer says souls, souls, and more souls. Hallelujah. So let's just keep that in mind that every mile is worth it. Every mile on my feet, every mile on my back and in my legs, every bag you lug, baby. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. Everything we do is for the gospel for the cause of Christ. And so every time you sow a seed, every time you get it in the ground, every time you start believing, putting your faith out there, it's for the gospel. Now don't just put your money into stuff, you know, sow it out there in worldly garbage that's not gonna bring you no harvest. There's there's a lot of places you can give out there and they some of them ain't even Christian. They might be a good cause, but you want your seed in the ground where it's gonna spring up as a harvest of souls. And that's very important for you to remember. Let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall re reap if we faint not. And then the last one I want to talk about harvest scriptures is Ephesians 6 8. Go back and replay this video and write down these scriptures and write them in your Bible. These are harvest scriptures. Knowing that whatsoever good thing any man does, the same shall he receive of the Lord, whether he be bond or free. I remember Mike Murdoch paraphrased that scripture. He said one time, I was with him in a meeting in, in Dallas, Texas years ago, and he coined the phrase and he said, what you make happen for others, God will make happen for you. And I said, where is that found? I'd like to find that. That's not in the Bible. He said, it just rolled right off his tongue. Ephesians 6, 8. And I looked it up. I said, looky, looky here. Sure enough whatsoever good thing any man does the same shall he receive of the lord whether he be bond or free what you make happen for others god will make happen for you and so if you're needing a miracle sow into somebody else's life if you're needing a breakthrough sow into somebody's life now the lord said that this seed that you're going to sow is going to produce victory or victorious breakthroughs in your life and that there's going to be a shifting a shifting a thousand dollar seed when this individual sowed this last night they know my teachings and my teaching is to name the seed aim it like a weapon towards a desired harvest and they wrote me back they said what should we name it how should we aim it i said we're going to name it <laughs> victorious breakthroughs with a new shifting for a new season and so you get on the horn right now. You get over there, point your browser, get over there to www.monthlypartners.com and whatever seed amount you put in there, in the comments, I want you to put in there victorious breakthroughs and an uncommon shifting. There's, there's got to be a shift for blessings and miracle supply to come to you this week. I'm talking about the first, the second, the third, the fourth, the fifth, those days I'm believing God. You're going you're gonna to write me. You're going to say, I sowed back there at the end of the month. And look at God. Look what he did. Look at God. Look at God. Thank you, Jesus, for a breakthrough harvest in the name of Jesus. Now, I want to pray for you. I want to get a head start. And I want to pray for you today. And I want the children to be quiet back there because we're going to pray. We're going to believe God. Look at those little feet on the cookie monster back there. Oh, the baby, baby, baby boy. Look at my baby boy. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you, Father, for my partners. I thank you, Father, for my friends. Lord, I pray for that minister who's struggling in their ministry. Lord, they don't know what to do. They're at the end of their rope. They've tried every which way with the people and the people are not listening. There's a belligerence in their church. Father, I ask you to move the mountain. Cause my brother, cause my sister to have a miracle breakthrough in their ministry, oh God. In Jesus' name, let all the ministry graces and the victories that are upon me and Angela for, minister, for successful ministry, let it be upon them as well. I thank you that they'll draw from a new anointing today. In the name of Jesus, I bind up every devil, 
every demon power that's come against you physically, spiritually, emotionally, financially. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I break its power. I come against every witchcraft spell. In Jesus' name, I come against every demon power, every devil, every curse, every hexing, and every vexing has to go from you in Jesus' name. And I plead the blood of Jesus over you right now. And I thank you, Father, for a miracle breakthrough of victory. And I thank you, Father, for a new shifting into a season of miracle harvest in their life. Financial breakthrough, you come forward now to my brother and to my sister. And Lord Jesus, I pray that they will get it in the mail. They'll get a phone call. They'll get an email. And they'll say, look what God has done. And they'll say, ever since I sowed, ever since I put the seed in the ground, look what the Lord has done. There's somebody watching right now. You can't sow a thousand dollars, but you can sow a you can sow three hundred dollars. And I told somebody the other day, they said, "What does three 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 mean?" I said, "That's a battle seed. Three three three, a, a seed for battle victory." And you may not be able to do a thousand dollars, but you can sow three three three. And I want you to get on the phone right now and sow that three 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 right now in Jesus' name. Sow it into the miraculous living. Sow it into the miraculous victory of your life in the name of Jesus. Let me tell you, friend, I am fired up and I'm ready to go. I am ready to see people delivered and I'm ready to see the prophetic flow like we have never seen it before. New levels a shifting higher into the glory realm in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Here's our drive before us today. A little cloudy today, which is okay, but we're coming down to 95 coming down the 95. Praise the Lord. All right, my friend, I'm going to look for your offering. I'm going to look for your seed. Go right now. Go on right now to www.monthlypartners.com. And uh, you can give with Cash App, by the way, at dollar sign sewing woods, dollar, sew, dollar sign sewing woods at Cash App. Or there's some people that are starting to give now with Zelle. And what Zelle does is there's no fees. Not that I know of and boom, instantly it transfers it into our ministry bank account and we put it into our gas, we put it into hotel. You are making the ministry possible by your love gift of support, your seed sowing. So I'm praying for you. Send me a message. Let me know how you're doing. Let me know how I can pray. I pray over that depression off of you in Jesus' name. The sun will shine again. The, the roses are going to bloom once more. And the storm is passing over. So hang on to God's faithful hand. Hang on to his word. Get your Bible out. Get into the word. Don't let the discouragement come against you. In the name of Jesus. I love you. Angela loves you. Hi. Amen. And uh, we'll talk to you again soon. We're uh, two, two and a half, three hours away from Fort Lauderdale. And, uh, you know, I think about Jesus' words. And uh, John the Baptist had just been beheaded. The disciples, I'm sure, were a little bit nervous or shaken, let's just say. And uh, Jesus said to Herod, tell that old fox I'm coming. And the fox represents the devil, the thief. We can figure that out. And I just, I just whenever I go into a new town or to, to a new territory... I just say out loud in the spirit realm, tell that old fox I'm coming in Jesus' name. The Fort Lauderdale fox, I'm coming in the name of Jesus. He's not going to rob the people of Miami, Fort Lauderdale in Jesus' name. We're going to put a stop to it. Let me tell you, I love this pastor. And I'm working, I, I am committed to coming to this man's church. People say, oh, we want you to come over here. We want you to come out. No, 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 no. I am with the spiritual son of A.A. Allen. It doesn't get any better than that. This man is highly respected and regarded in heaven. He is the prophet of God, the pastor, the evangelist, the apostle. And when I come into Fort Lauderdale, this is the church I'm committed to. And so if you want to see me, I'm not going to any other church. This is the church I'm going to. I'm committed to this man and I'm committed to this church. Angela and I both are. We're committed to see this church grow. When the pastor and the evangelist plow in the same direction, God will not only get the glory, 
but the church will be added to and will be increased in the name of Jesus. So I'm very excited about it. And uh, we're on our way. We're on our way. I wish I could play the song, I'm on my way. But the Facebook and YouTube won't allow me because it's about money, money, money with them. They're all about copyright monies. But oh well. We're on our way. We're on our way. I love you all. Thanks for listening. Go right now if you haven't already gone and sown. I'm going to be looking throughout the day. And when it comes in, the matching funds challenge up to $1,000, we're going to say, look what the Lord has done. In fact, I'm praying that the next time I come back on this video, it will already be done. And I'll report. I'll give you a good report, okay? I love you. God bless you. Say bye, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.